Perhaps depressing the restriction orifice plunger didn't solve the problem. The relay is now suspect and should be disassembled. Turn off the air supply and remove the relay. Disassemble the relay. Carefully examine the diaphragms. Look for holes, cracks, or tears. Examine the relay inner valve for nicks, cuts, or dirt. Make sure all the ports in the relay are clean. If the stainless steel bushing in the relay is badly scored or excessively worn, replace the entire relay body. Check all O-rings for cuts, nicks, and wear damage. Examine the relay gasket and replace it if necessary. Clean all the parts and lubricate the O-rings with Luberplate 130AA. Use the grease sparingly. When you reassemble the end flange, depress the nozzle and hold it down until the four flange screws are tightened. This will ensure proper slack between the two diaphragms. Install the relay. Check it for proper operation. Perhaps the piston operator is erratic or sluggish in performance. Several things can cause this, but one of the most common things is a dirty flapper. Loosen the flapper screw. Swing the flapper out and clean it. Return the flapper back to its normal position. Clean the other flapper in a like manner. Another cause of poor performance is a faulty relay. Inspect and repair the relay as previously mentioned. A worn or damaged piston O-ring in the actuator will also cause sluggish piston operation. And so will worn seal O-rings. To disassemble and inspect the piston internals, remove all air lines from the positioner. Disengage the range spring from the actuator stem. Loosen the two cap screws that hold the positioner to the cylinder. Remove the positioner. Don't lose the O-ring that gaskets the part connecting the positioner to the cylinder top. Remove the stem connector and the rubber boot. Remove the socket head cap screw that holds the cylinder to the yoke. Remove the cylinder. Use a screwdriver to pry the cylinder off the yoke. The piston and the piston rod will come out with the cylinder. Force the piston out the open end of the cylinder. Unscrew the cylinder seal bushing and the yoke seal bushing. Inspect all parts for signs of wear or damage. Replace any defective parts. Examine the cylinder walls for scoring and excessive wear. If you suspect excessive wear, have the inside diameter of the cylinder miked. If it is worn badly, replace it. Lubricate the piston O-ring and the seals with LubraPlate 130AA. Reassemble the valve. In summary, erratic or sluggish piston operator type actuator performance can be caused by bad order pneumatic relay, bad order piston operator internal parts, dirty flappers. Now, work exercise 7 in your workbook. Anytime you completely overhaul a valve, as we just did, you have to adjust the positioner. 
there are three adjustments on the Fisher 3570. The bias spring setting determines zero, or starting point. The range spring tension determines travel, or stroke. And the relay nozzle adjustments control the sensitivity of the positioner. This particular actuator is 3 to 15 PSI direct acting. To make the adjustments, apply a 9-pound input signal and 35 to 100 pounds of air supply. Loosen the lock nut below the bias spring. And adjust the bias spring up or down until the valve is midway between open and closed. Observe the cylinder pressure gauges. The two gauges should indicate 75% of the air supply valve. And they should be within 5 PSI of each other. As you can see, the gauges are not. So, adjust a nozzle with a 5 16th inch open end wrench to obtain the proper cylinder pressures. The beam should also be horizontal. And the free end of the beam should be located midway between the two E-ring travel stops. Adjust the nozzle to obtain the relationships. Vary the instrument pressure. If it takes more than 12 PSI to obtain full travel, adjust the range spring counterclockwise. If it takes less than 12 PSI to obtain full travel, adjust the range spring clockwise. After the relay nozzles and the range spring adjustments are completed, apply 3 PSI and adjust the bias spring until the valve just starts to move. Check span and zero one more time. Then lock the range spring and the bias spring. Now, work exercise seven in your workbook. In previous examples, the actuator has been in bad order. But what do you do if the actuator appears to be in proper order and the valve still doesn't work properly? For instance, this air close valve has 15 PSI on it, yet the travel indicator shows only 50% travel. We can make several assumptions. The packing might be too tight. There may be some foreign material stuck between the plug and seat. There may be a buildup of trash, such as scale, sand, or coke in the bottom guide. Or the plug may be sticking in the guides. Disassemble the valve to locate the problem. Remove the bottom. This valve had foreign matter in it. Check the plug and seats for damage. If the plug or seats show signs of wear or damage, either replace or have them machined. To remove the seats, use a seat lug bar. Engage the bar. Put the keeper on the seat lug bar. Turn the seat lug bar counterclockwise to remove the seats. Make sure you put the seats back in the valve body correctly. Remember, on a double-seated valve, one seat is slightly larger than the other. This is the blind head off a control valve. Can you see why the valve could not travel full stroke? The lower guide had a deposit of trash. And the plug had nowhere to go. This weep hole is designed to flush out trash, but sometimes it is inadequate. 
If the plug or the guides are scored or galled, replace them. Now, work exercise eight in your workbook.